everybody, this is David with Cartoon Fortress. Today is August 2nd, 2020. This marks the end of the Barnes & Noble 50% off Criterion sale. It's been a wonderful few weeks. There's been some really landmark titles released by Criterion as of late that people have been picking up. It's been great to see different uh, haul videos. I've uh, come onto a few different channels as a result of looking up haul videos and so there's some new channels that I'm excited to be uh, viewing content from and I love to see what the community does around sale time, the different titles that people pick up and and to see everyone's different tastes and that type of thing. So really excited to be able to take part in the sale this month. I have picked up uh, a lot of titles that I was after and as we all knew it was going to happen I have uh, one final haul here and I'm going to be featuring 11 titles. Um, now there's some titles this sale that were harder to find in store. I know there's been stock issues online on barnesnoble.com and uh, in store I've been lucky. Um, just about everything that I was after I was able to find in store without any issue. There are a couple of titles in this stack that I had to turn to Amazon for. Um, because they were uh, very, very popular and just harder to get a hold of. Um, and I'll be sure and point out uh, which titles those were. But uh, I've got 11 titles here. Let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, the first two films here are from the same director. I've been all in on his work uh, recently. And uh, this is the filmmaker Abbas Kiristami. Uh, the first one here is a new release, and I was able to find this one in store. My store had a couple of copies in stock, and so I was glad to be able to just pick it up in store and walk away with it. So uh, the first one here is The Taste of Cherry. Uh, this is from 1997 and comes in at a runtime of 99 minutes, and this is spine number 45. This is a Blu-ray upgrade from a previous DVD release. As you can tell by the spine number, it's a very uh, old spine number. So, uh, yeah. So this is this is just just released here during the sale. So, um, as I said, I'm very excited about the work of Kiristami. Um, I have not seen this film. I love how human his work is. The the commentary on the human experience, and uh, this looks like it's absolutely no exception. I've read up on this film a little bit and I'm very intrigued and uh, I will be uh, watching this one very soon. So uh, Taste of Cherry from 1997. Uh, the second title from Kiristami that I picked up was actually his final film. Uh, this one looks very intriguing. I've read up on it just a little bit, just enough to know uh, that I'm very interested in watching it. Um, it seems almost a bit experimental. Uh, from what I've read um, but at any rate this is 24 frames and this is from 2017 so again this is his last film before he passed away and this comes in at a runtime of 114 minutes and this is spine number 956 so definitely a more recent spine number than Taste of Cherry um, and I wanted to mention as well on Taste of Cherry uh, this one does actually feature a new 4K digital restoration, so that's something that it will have on the the DVD release. I'm not sure in terms of other uh, supplements if this has anything that the, that the DVD doesn't, um, but there's a good amount of extras to get into here. And as far as 24 frames goes, uh, there's a 2K digital master, and then we have some interviews and conversations, and then there's also a short documentary about the making of the film by Kiristami collaborator, uh, and I'm not even going to attempt to say this name, um, but there's a, a yeah short, short documentary about the making of the film and then a trailer. Uh, so very excited to get into this. I'm very intrigued by, uh, again, the it, it seems to be more experimental, um, a mix of... Uh, possibly animation here it seems like uh, live action and animation um, but really excited to see what this one's all about all right next up it's always fun to add comedies to the collection I do love 
more serious films and there's definitely a lot of those to dive into in the Criterion Collection but it's always great to add a new comedy. My wife and I recently watched the the new release of The Lady Eve and it was just so much fun. It's, it's fun to have these more lighthearted films in the collection and um, I've heard a lot of good things about this title. Uh, this is directed by Gregory Lacava and this is My Man Godfrey. And this is an earlier title. This is from 1936 and has a runtime of 93 minutes. And this is spine number 114. Uh, this one also features a new 4K digital restoration, a new program featuring jazz and film critic Gary Giddens, um, interview with uh, critic Nick Pinkerton. Um, and then as I've seen recently, it seems like I'm seeing this on a lot more releases or maybe I'm just becoming more conscious of it. Um, but this features a Lux Radio Theater adaptation of the film from 1938. Um, that seems to be a trend. Um, um, in fact, I, well, I know War of the Worlds has the radio adaptation, and then I believe uh, The Lady Eve that I was just talking about a second ago has a radio adaptation, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I know I've seen that on, on multiple titles recently, so I think that's an awesome extra feature to include. And then we also have newsreels uh, depicting Great, De Great Depression class divides, uh, trailer, and then the essay on the, the uh, booklet or pamphlet inside. Um, so this is My Man Godfrey from 1936. All right, next up, we have a filmmaker here that I am new to. I've heard a lot of great things about her work. This is Kelly Reichardt. And uh, this is a more recent film. This is from 2000, well, so maybe not too recent, uh, from 2006. And this is spine number 1008. This is Old Joy. Uh, so again, from 2006, this comes in a, a short runtime of 73 minutes. Um, another film that I've heard amazing things about, uh, Cinema Dave Media made a recommendation on this. He covered this on his channel recently, and I've heard some others in the community talking about it, and so I had, <clears throat> I had to jump on this. Um, and this is basically about the uh, two friends who go on a uh, camping trip, and it's, it's kind of the end of their friendship, and they've, they're their paths, they've, they've gone different paths in their lives and and this is kind of a, a final um, coming together of these two friends in their, in their friendship. And so it seems like it's going to be an emotional watch. Um, the location, I believe this takes place in Oregon, which is near and dear to my heart. I lived in Oregon many years ago uh, growing up and I love that, that landscape of uh, the, uh, the Pacific Northwest. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. I know, uh, and, and I'm trying to remember if uh, Dave brought this up in his, in his video, um, but the, the dog featured in the film here is actually Kelly Reichardt's dog. And I guess I, she doesn't like to leave her dog at home or you know, be a part while she's making her films, and so she features uh, him, her. I don't know <laughs> if it's a boy or girl, but uh, features her dog in her films, and so I think that's really kind of a cool little little detail to make note of. But um, yeah, so I'm really excited to jump into this. So this has a new 2K digital restoration um, approved by Kelly Reichardt and cinematographer Peter Sillen with uncompressed stereo soundtrack, new interviews and conversations, and then the uh, essay in the booklet that's included here. So I'm really excited to see what her work is all about. And I know she's got some other films in the collection. Uh, I believe another one that I've heard recently discussed was uh, Certain Women, I believe is the name of the film. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to jumping into this and then continuing to uh, study her work. So Old Joy from 2006. All right, next up. So these next two are the ones that I had to pick up on Amazon because I 
they were just harder to come about in the store. Um, this is maybe possibly the most popular title this sale. Uh, this is a new film from uh, 2019 and uh, this is Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Um, really excited to get my hands on this. I've heard nothing but wonderful things and now this is a a bit of a departure for me in terms of uh, period pieces typically aren't my thing um, but I've heard so many amazing things about this film and the cinematography looks to be absolutely outstanding and so this is one that I definitely had to take a chance on yes I know it's available on Hulu I I can stream this film um, but gut feeling on this one it was one that I had to pick up so I tracked it down was able to get it again on Amazon and uh, really looking forward to watching it this is a newer release so this is uh, spine number 1034 again it's from 2019 and has a runtime <coughs> excuse me of 121 minutes and uh, so this features a new 4k digital master a new conversation between director Celine Siama and film critic Diana Stevens, new interviews, uh, and then there's a, uh, looks like, well, yeah, but a bunch of different interviews, and then an uh, interview from 2019 with artist uh, Helen uh, Del, uh, Del Mer on creating the paintings for the film, uh, so that'll be really interesting, because obviously the, the, uh, painting is a key kind of feature of this story um, so really looking forward to this in fact my uh, my brother was a big big advocate for me picking this up he watched the film and, and had again nothing but positive things to say about it and just the community in general has been very positive on this one so very much looking forward to this portrait of a lady on fire all right, and this next one, this is another popular title uh, during the sale, and again, one that I had to pick up on Amazon. Uh, this is from Martin Scorsese. This is spine number 1030, and this is Scorsese Shorts. Now, this features five films from Scorsese. We have Italian American from 1974. That has a runtime of 49 minutes. We have American Boy from 1978. Uh, that comes in at 55 minutes. The Big Shave from 1967 at 5 minutes. It's Not Just You, Murray, from 1964, that's 16 minutes. And finally, we have What's a Nice Girl Like You Doing in a Place Like This from 1963, and that is uh, 10 minutes. Um, and this features 4K digital restorations on all five films. And then we have some... Uh, conversations and interviews and then a new uh, discussion and I actually watched this on or at least part of this I think I started in on it and then I knew I was going to be picking up the blu-ray so I just was waiting to dive in on the extras here but there's a new discussion among filmmakers Ari Aster and Josh and Benny Safdie so that's going to be really interesting I, I watched the first few minutes and uh was very interested in what they have to say so I'll, I'll definitely jump back into that here and then there's a public radio interview from 1970 with Scorsese and then a booklet featuring an essay by film critic uh, Bill Jabiri and storyboards treatments and correspondence from Scorsese's archive so very much looking forward to this one I can tell there's a little more heft to this I think there's a yeah it's a thicker uh, stapled booklet in this one so not one of the kind of fold out leaflet type things but more of a a proper stapled booklet so I'm really looking forward to looking at that but <clears throat> this is one that I was really excited to pick up uh, so this is Scorsese shorts <coughs> all right so this next one is spine number 699 this is from 1991 uh, I love documentaries and uh, this is uh, some really a, a really interesting subject um, 
excuse me, got a frog in my throat. And uh, this is about Stephen Hawking. Uh, this is a brief history of time. And this is the dual format edition, which uh, Criterion is no longer producing. So it's interesting when you do come across these. So this has the Blu-ray and DVD and a very thick booklet in this one as well. I believe it features excerpts from uh, from the book, A Brief History of Time. And uh, really looking forward to this uh, documentary. Um, from what I read up on, it's not as much about the science, but more about Stephen Hawking and his life, um, which either way that goes, I'm, I'm interested in the science, but I'm also interested in the person. Um, and so either way that goes, if, if it falls heavier on more of just a, a look at Stephen Hawking himself, I'm very much looking forward to this. And I'm also reading the, the included booklet so this has a new restored 4K digital film transfer. Um, and then, again, the Blu-ray and DVD. Um, it's pretty light on extras, actually, but then it's got the booklet featuring an essay by critic David Sterrett, and then a chapter from Stephen Hawking's 2013 memoir, My Brief History, and an excerpt from Hawking's 1988 book, A Brief History of Time. Uh, so again, this is from 1991. This is a runtime of 84 minutes and uh, looks to be a great release. <clears throat> All right, next up we have, again, a newer film. This is from 2018. Uh, this is by a film by Powell, uh, Pawlikowski, Pawlikowski. And I want to give a shout out here. This comes off of recommendation from Luke over at Razor Wire Reviews, uh, he seemed very adamant about this film and just how gorgeously shot it is. And um, I was really sold on him talking about the film. So thank you, Luke, for the recommendation. Um, again, this is from 2018. This is Cold War. And this is actually, so this is interesting because we have, uh, we have films from Netflix, multiple films now in the collection from Netflix. And this one is from Amazon. So it's interesting, or Amazon Studios, if you want the proper name, but it's just interesting to see titles coming into the collection from Amazon and Netflix. And it's it's going to be interesting to see how these relationships uh, go kind of down the road. I'm Personally, I'm excited to see these films entering the collection. I think there's some uh, great films being made these days by really awesome filmmakers. And um, I think good film is good film. And so I, I'm excited to see these titles come into the collection. Um, and I hope those relationships continue strong. I know we've got uh, the, the pending announcement uh, for The Irishman from Martin Scorsese, which is, of course, a Netflix film, and uh, a couple of others as well coming from Netflix. But really inter interested to see how this relationship with these studios continues down the road. But uh, I, for one, am, am very excited. Uh, so this is uh, comes in at a runtime of 88 minutes. I don't know if I said the spine number on this one. This is spine number 1005. Um, so again, a recent release. Uh, so this features a, a new 4K digital master. And then uh, we have a conversation between Palakowski and filmmaker Alejandro G. Uh, Inaritu. Uh, press conference from the 2018 Cannes Film Festival. Um, two 2018 programs on the making of the film. Uh, trailers and then a new English subtitle translation. And then in a, the included leaflet here, we have an essay by film critic Stephanie uh, Zacharek. Sorry if I'm butchering those names. Um, but yeah, Cold War. Uh, this looks to be a really great uh, romance film. And it's filmed in black and white, uh, which I personally am always a fan of. I love, love black and white films. Um, and... I think it really works well. I mean, that aesthetic, I know another 
recent film that I can think of, uh, Noah Baumbach's Francis Ha. That's another recent film that was filmed in black and white. And I just, I love that aesthetic, that look. Um, so I'm always up for a black and white film. But uh, Cold War from uh, 2018. All right, next up, I'm really excited to pick this title up. Uh, this is from Charlie Chaplin. And this is spine number 996. This is from uh, 1928, but there's also a 1969 version. And this is The Circus. Now, admittedly, this is not my favorite uh, Chaplin. In fact, it, it might be my least favorite Chaplin that I've seen. But we're talking about Charlie Chaplin. So even the films from Charlie Chaplin that I'm not as crazy about are still great films <laughs> so you really can't go wrong with Chaplin this is not me saying this is a bad film it's just not my favorite Chaplin um, but I'm very excited to have this in the collection to continue my uh, my collecting of the Chaplin titles I believe I'm just two titles short from being criterion complete on his work um, I know I still need the kid and then I'm, I apologize, I don't remember the name. I believe it was his last film. Um, and the name of the film is escaping me. Um, but yeah, there's one other in the in the collection that I, uh, that I haven't picked up yet. So I'll pick up The Kid and that film here, hopefully before too long. Um, but this has a new 4K digital restoration of Charlie Chaplin's 1969 release of the film. Um, so I guess there's not a restoration on the 1928 version. Um, I'm not sure what the differences are uh, or what the version was that I watched. I believe I, I believe I watched the film on the Criterion channel. Um, so I'm not sure if that was the, the, uh, the new restoration on the 1969 version that I watched, um, or not. So I, I'll, I'll have to check that out. But uh, there's plenty of extra features to get into here. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, but this one did seem particularly interesting, and this is Chaplin Today, uh, The Circus, a 2003 documentary on the film featuring uh, filmmaker Amir uh, Costa Rica. And then a bunch of other extras to get into here. So very excited to dive into the supplements on this one and then look at also the differences between the 1928 and 1969 versions of the film. Um, but this is the circus from Charlie Chaplin. All right, two more to go here. This next one I've been after, it's one of those titles that I see, and I hear other collectors talk about this. There's titles that you see during the sale at Barnes & Noble, you know you want them in the collection or in your, in your collection, but you just kind of pass them by. Uh, this is definitely one of those films for me and I'm, so I'm, I'm really happy to finally have this. Uh, this is from Francis Ford Coppola, uh, or sorry, it he produced it. This is a Carol Ballard film, I'm very sorry. Uh, this is a Carol Ballard film. This is from 1979 and this is The Black Stallion. Um, this is one that I've heard only positive things about. Strangely enough, I haven't seen this, and it seems like one that I definitely should have seen growing up. Um, but from what I hear, this is just one of those really, really magical uh, family films. And so I'm really interested to, to dive in on this one. Um, and uh, this is spine number 765. Uh, so this is a more recent release than I, than I originally thought it was. I thought it was an older um, spine number than that, but yeah, spine number 765. And uh, this also features a restored 4K digital transfer. Um, and that was support, uh, supervised by the DP, Caleb uh, Deschanel. Um, and then we have uh, five short films actually by director Carol Ballard with uh, new introductions by the filmmaker. So that's really wonderful. I love 
and I know this has been said many times by many other people, but that's one thing I love about Criterion is a lot of times, yeah, they have a higher price tag, but so many times you get not only the main film, but you get supplementary films that are included as well. There's so many cases of this in the collection. Uh, one that I recently watched was Stanley Kubrick's The Killing, which also features his prior film, Killer's Kiss. Um, here we get The Black Stallion and we get five short films. Um, I know on the release of uh, David Cronenberg's Scanners, not only do you get Scanners, but you get another film from Cronenberg. Um, I love that type of thing. So it's just, it's amazing how much you get for your money with these releases. And not to mention the amazing restoration work that goes into these. Criterion will always be a company that I'm happy to throw my money at um, because of just the stellar work that they do. So five short films included here, which is just great. Uh, so we have Pigs from 1965, The Perils of Priscilla from 1969, Rodeo from 1969, Seems Like Only Yesterday from 1971, and finally Crystallization from 1974. Um, my anticipation for this one is very high, especially now that I have it in hand. This is one that I plan on watching very soon and I will most definitely be watching this one with my kids. This does carry a G rating, um, so if this is one you're looking to pick up and you have kids, uh, it'd be a great one to watch with the family. So, 1979, The Black Stallion. And finally here, we have yet another film that I keep coming across during these sales and keep passing on by. Um, again, my brother that I was talking about earlier, he has been telling me to pick this title up and so finally I listened to him <laughs> um, and this is in collaboration with the UCLA uh, Film and Television Archive which they have a, a large presence in the collection as well in terms of uh, collaborating on these restorations and things like that. Uh, this is from 1957 this is directed by Stanley Kubrick this is Paths of Glory starring the wonderful Kirk Douglas, rest in peace. Uh, I am very excited to get into this. Uh, this is one of the most popular uh, anti-war films ever made. Um, if you watch my previous haul videos from the sale, you'll see that I did pick up uh, Come and See as well, which is another anti-war film. I'm really interested to see uh, what these films, what these filmmakers have to say about war. Um, and uh, to have a film here with Kirk Douglas, I'm, I'm a big Kirk Douglas fan. Admittedly, I'm not, I haven't seen a ton of Kirk Douglas's uh, filmography, but enough to know that I'm totally uh, sold on him as an actor. He's just his acting packs such a punch. Um, one of my favorite films in the Criterion Collection is Ace in the Hole by Billy Wilder. And uh, that will always remain one of my favorite favorites in the collection. But his performance in that film is just so electric. Um, and I'm sure we're going to get exactly that here as well. So, uh, very excited to jump into this. So this features a new restored high definition digital transfer. Um, we have an excerpt, or so we have an audio commentary excerpt from a 1966 audio interview with director Stanley Kubrick, television interview uh, from 1979 with star Kirk Douglas, um, and then there's some other features in here as well, and then we have a booklet featuring an essay by film scholar James Nairmore. So it uh, seems to be a really great release here. And then again, we do have the collaboration with the UCLA Film and Television Archive. And uh, spine number on this one is 538. Did I say the spine number? Oh yes, I did, on uh, Black Stallion. Um, so spine number 538, 
And again, from 1957, this is a runtime of 88 minutes. All right, so that does it. That's my final haul for this sale. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments down below the titles that you've picked up uh, during this sale. I'm always interested to know what other people are getting. Um, and, and let me know your thoughts on those films if you have any. I know a lot of these we go in and and uh, blind by these titles. I think that's one of the fun things about being a collector, honestly. I'm all in on the, the blind buying and, and you know doing your research, but um, having these films be a new experience is, is a really fun thing. And it's kind of fun to uh, take a gamble on some of these and, and put your money up. But again, Criterion does such stellar work that it's uh, beyond just the main film that's featured there's so much education to be had in the supplements that are included not to mention the booklets with uh, the essays by these different film scholars and and uh, other people in the film community so i uh, very excited about all of these releases there's not a, a single title here that i was just kind of half half on i'm very excited about all of these and uh, if you haven't had a chance to do so uh, go back on the channel and you'll see my other uh, this is the third haul video for this sale so you can see the other two up on the channel right now and if you found this video helpful in any way um, definitely hit that subscribe button I would love to have you be a part of this community here on the Cartoon Fortress channel we we have a lot of great conversations in the comments I always appreciate your comments so definitely don't be shy uh, you know, say hi, we can talk about film, whatever you want to do, you're always welcome here on this channel. And um, if you do subscribe, remember to hit the like button as well on this video and the bell icon. That will notify you when I upload new videos in the future, uh, which I try and do as often as possible. I try and get a couple of videos out per week. Uh, that will be up and down, sometimes more, sometimes less, but I try and make the content uh, pretty consistent on this channel. So until next time, this is David signing off with Cartoon Fortress, and I hope you have a wonderful day.